All right, so today we're talking about the Sure 50 millimeter full frame T2.9 anamorphic lens. This is a new lens to the Sure anamorphic lineup. It is made for uh, full frame cameras. And today I'm using it on a Canon R6 with an R mount. I've seen a lot of videos out there uh, with people using it on a Sony E uh, mount, you know, with the A7S III or an A7 IV, but today we're doing it on an R6. Um, so hopefully uh, you will be able to see how that footage looks. I've got a lot of footage today, so let's do this. So this is the Sure 50mm T2.9 uh, anamorphic lens. It has a 1.66D squeeze and it is a chunky uh, beast. It's a uh, very good size. It's um, heavy coming in over I do believe two pounds and it is a, it's a great great lens. Um, this one is an R mount. This will be used on my Canon EOS R uh, and R6. So some of the things to sort of note about this, um, it does have geared rings uh, for focus and aperture. The throw is fairly short, um, but still smooth. It's got a little bit of resistance. Uh, and then the aperture ring has got a little bit more weight to it, you know, stiffer, which is good because you don't necessarily want to be changing your aperture accidentally. The rings, uh, the focus ring and the aperture ring are fairly close together. I have had a number of times where I've accidentally turned the aperture ring instead of the focus ring. So I would suggest setting a follow focus on this and just leaving it that way. The markings on it, so the aperture markings are in T-stops and the focus has not only meters but also has feet on it, uh, which is convenient. So if uh, you're in the United States like myself, we use you know feet, um, but most people will use meters. This lens um, is heavy. It's uh, sharp and fast. Um, one thing that I did do is I added an ND filter onto it uh, simply because I do a lot of outside shooting. I don't know quite how that will affect the image. Uh, I will typically stick a UV filter on it just to protect the front. Uh, a lot of debate on UV filters and this is a 82 millimeter front um, ring on it. So all of my standard 77s don't fit, so I got a special 82 for this one. Uh, it's got that standard like anamorphic box look. Um, the coating on the, the front element is that blue coating um, that Sure, all the Sure lenses have. It's all metal, so it's a really sturdy and heavy um, lens. And again, like I said, there's it's about over two pounds. There is a lens mount on the bottom uh, of the lens. Uh, so if you are using a lighter camera and you want to mount directly to the mount here, you could do that. Now, one thing that I've been doing is when I have this on my camera, I actually use a lens support, which just holds up the front. As far as the rear um, mount, it's a, this one is an R mount. It comes in uh, a number of different mounts. So I chose the R mount simply because I have Canon uh, R cameras. The mount fit is snug. Um, it's not as snug as some of the Surrey uh, anamorphics I have, but it does uh, fit on there well. It doesn't have much play. Now on some of my other Surrey anamorphics, I have had problems with mounting them on and either having them um, not mount 100% right and have to reset it. Um, this one haven't had any problems yet. Um, it's been pretty good. The all black finish is in line with their cinema um, versions of their camera uh, lenses, such as the Mars set. It's nice uh, black labeling with white and uh, the nice blue ring that the other Surrey lenses have. Uh, there are a couple things that I'm not a terribly big fan of with this lens. Um, so let's get into that now. So with this lens, um, there's a minimal focus uh, distance of I think a little over two feet. It doesn't seem like a lot, but when you're actually uh, using the camera 
uh, are using the lens uh, on your camera and you're trying to film something close up, it becomes noticeable the distance that you have to set back in order to get things in focus. Uh, you can fix this with a diopter. I don't know how a diopter would affect the overall image coming out of it, but uh, that is one option. It shouldn't affect it, but uh, the minimal focus distance is, um, it's two and a half feet. Uh, so it's a little annoying because when you set up to take a shot and you realize that you're not far enough back and then you have to reframe everything. And that's something that other reviewers have said about this lens. The other thing that's sort of a struggle with this lens is it's a 1.6. Now, the 1.3 is something that's natively supported in DaVinci um, and other uh, you know, areas or other NLEs and 1.3 is also supported natively in cameras, um, on monitors and so forth. So this one being 1.6, it's a little bit different than, than most. I do de-squeeze this natively in DaVinci using 1.5 and then I adjust the height, uh, just to see if it's, you know, a need of, um, either if, if a face is looking too wide or too narrow um, or a scene in general, you know, just adjusting it. Now I have tried to go to, you know, I've used my anamorphic calculator and done it that way, but the footage doesn't come out looking as natural uh, that way. I actually like it a little bit on the 1.5 side. Uh, that might just be personal preference and how, you know, I like how narrow or, or wide uh, the shot to be. I hope that DaVinci will add this into their native uh, de-squeeze options uh, just to make it easier and quicker to get the footage in. The other thing that's um, sort of tricky to work with this lens on is the fact that my monitors don't have native de-squeeze. I've always had de-squeeze in camera, so monitoring it has become a little tricky, um, the footage that is. And so I did go out and get uh, a monitor, a budget monitor, and that's probably gonna come later on in the week. Uh, so I'll go ahead and, and post a review of that. I did look into getting the one uh, monitor, and I think it's an Andy Cine uh, monitor that DSLR Shooter uh, on that channel, uh, Caleb, had reviewed as the best um, budget uh, monitor. Now, with him putting that out there, everybody ran out and bought every monitor that was available on Earth. So, I didn't have that option. And with the holidays coming up, what I really wanted to do is be able to use this lens and be able to monitor in an effective manner. So, I went out and I got another uh, version. I think it's a Feel World uh, monitor, and it had a 1.5 D squeeze. Now, 1.5 D squeeze would be fine. Like I said, when I de-squeeze it in DaVinci Resolve, it looks natural, it looks nice. Uh, so I think monitoring at 1.5 would be good enough. If your camera doesn't support native uh, de-squeeze inside, that's that's always an option. Now, hopefully Canon will pick up the slack and go ahead and add a de-squeeze option to their cameras, um, simply because these budget anamorphic options are becoming more, you know, standard and regular. So, and since, you know, lenses like this and I know Sura is going to add in a couple more uh, focal distances or um, you know uh, probably a 35 or 25 uh, and an 85 or a 75 to this set. Um, I think it's going to become very standard that there needs to be de-squeeze options uh, in the Canon cameras. All right so if you like this video go ahead and hit the like button and feel free to subscribe. Uh, I'll be posting more videos on a more regular basis now that some of the uh, things that have been keeping me busy in the last few have subsided a bit. I know with the holidays, things get trickier to uh, go ahead and get content out there. There might be a gap at the end of the year simply because I'll be enjoying family time with, uh, you know, at the holidays and so, and doing a little bit of traveling. So hopefully I'll be able to get some more content then and be able to share it with you. So cat says hi. That cat says hi, uh, and we're doing good. So hopefully everybody enjoyed their Thanksgiving, and, uh, and everywhere else in the world, have a great day.